Be seated. Men, the stuff that some sources sling around about America wanting out of this war, not wanting to fight, is a crock of bullshit. Americans love to fight, traditionally. All real Americans love the sting and clash of battle. You are here today for three reasons. First, because you are here to defend your homes and your loved ones. Second, you are here for your own self-respect because you would not want to be anywhere else. Third, you are here because you are real men and all real men like to fight. When you hear with kids, you all admired the champion marble player, the fastest runner, the toughest boxer, the big league ball player, and the all-American football player. Americans love a winner. Americans will not tolerate a loser. Americans despise cowards. Americans play to win all the time. I wouldn't give a hoot in hell for a man who lost and laughed. That's why Americans have never lost nor will ever lose a war. The very idea of losing is hateful to an American. You're not all going to die. Only 2% of you right here today would die in a major battle. Death must not be feared. Death in time comes to all men. Yes, every man is scared in his first battle. If he says he's not, he's a liar. Some men are cowards. But they fight the same as the brave men. Or they get the hell slammed out of them watching men fight who are just as scared as they are. The real hero is a man who fights, even though he is scared. Some men get over their fright in a minute under fire. For some, it takes an hour. For some, it takes days. But a real man will never let his fear of death overpower his honor, his sense of duty to his country, and his innate manhood. Battle is the most magnificent competition in which a human being can indulge. It brings out the best and it removes all that is base. Americans pride themselves on being he-men. And they are he-men. Remember that the enemy is just as frightened as you are. And probably more so. They are not supermen. All through your army careers, you men have bitched about what you call chicken shit drilling. That, like everything else in this army, has a definite purpose. That purpose is alertness. Alertness must be bred into every soldier. I don't give a fuck for a man who's not always on his toes. You men are veterans, or you wouldn't be here. You are ready for what's to come. A man must be alert at all times if he expects to stay Alive! If you're not alert, sometime a German son of an asshole bitch is going to sneak up behind you and beat you to death with a sock full of shit. There are 400 neatly marked graves somewhere in Sicily. All because one man went to sleep on the job. But they are German graves because we caught the bastard asleep before they did. An army is a team. It lives, sleeps, eats, and fights as a team. This individual heroic stuff is pure horseshit. The biggest bastards who write that kind of stuff for the Saturday Evening Post don't know any more about real fighting under fire than they know about fucking. We have the finest food, the finest equipment, the best spirit, and the best men in the world. 
By God, I actually pity those poor sons of bitches we're going up against. By God, I do. My men don't surrender. I don't want to hear of any soldier under my command being captured unless he has been hit. Even if you are hit, you can still fight back. That's not just bullshit either. The kind of man that I want in my command is just like the lieutenant in Libya who with a luger against his chest jerked off his helmet, swept the gun aside with one hand and busted the hell out of the crowd with his helmet. Then he jumped on the gun and went out and killed another German before they knew what the hell was coming off. And all that time, this man had a bullet through a lung. There was a real man. All the real heroes are not storybook combat fighters. Every single man in this army plays a vital role. Don't ever let up. Don't ever think that your job is unimportant. Every job, every man has a job to do and he must do it. Every man is a vital link in the great chain. What if every truck driver suddenly decided that he didn't like the whine of those shells overhead, turned yellow and jumped headlong into a ditch? The cowardly bastard could say, hell, they won't miss me, just one man in thousands. But what if every man thought that way? Where the hell would we be now? What would our country, our loved ones, our homes, even the world be like? No, God damn it, Americans don't think like that. Every man does his job. Every man serves the whole. Every department, every unit is important in the vast scheme of the war. The ordnance men are needed to supply the guns and machinery of war to keep us rolling. The quartermaster is needed to bring up food and clothes because where we are going there isn't a hell of a lot to steal. Every last man on KP has a job to do, even the one who heats our water to keep us from getting the GI shits. Each man must not think only of himself but also of his buddy fighting beside him. We don't want yellow cowards in this army. They should be killed off like rats. If not, they will go home and after this war and breed more cowards. The brave men will breed more brave men. Kill off the goddamn cowards and we will have a nation of brave men. One of the bravest men that I ever saw was a fellow on top of a telegraph pole in the midst of a furious fight in Tunisia. I stopped and asked, what the hell he was doing up there at a time like this? He answered, fixing the wire, sir. I asked, isn't that a little unhealthy right about now? He answered, yes, sir, but the goddamn wire has to be fixed. I asked, don't those planes strafing the road bother you? And he answered, no, sir, but, but you sure as hell do. Now, there was a real man, a real soldier. There was a man who devoted all he had to his duty, no matter how seemingly insignificant his duty might appear at the time, no matter how great the odds. And you should have seen those trucks on the road to Tunisia. Those drivers were magnificent. All day and all night they rolled over those son of a bitchin' roads, never stopping, never faltering from their course with shells bursting around them, all the time. We got through on good old American guts. Many of those men drove for over 40 consecutive hours. These men weren't combat men, but they were soldiers with a job to do. They did it, and in one hell of a way they did it. They were part of a team. Without team effort, without them, the fight would have been lost. All of the links in the chain pulled together and the chain became unbreakable.